Hello, Yarny friends. I am Jude. Welcome to Llamas in Pajamas. Today is a much requested video. It is whip and faux time. Um, first, I'd like to address that we have a new microphone situation. So hopefully the sound is slightly better. And there is one for Mr. Pajamas whenever he joins. Um, also, um, Crafty Nisi asked about the cat that's in the background now. So it is from Michaels. It was bought when I, I bought some yarn and so I saw the Halloween cat thing and I thought it was really cute and it was on sale at the time. So I threw it in the cart and I just love it. Um, it may be a just here for Halloween. It may be a permanent thing. Not sure yet. So I have quite a lot of things to show. So I'm going to try and move slightly quickly because I don't want to make this a 45 minute video. So, um, first I have to address, I craft for charity. For 30 years I've crafted for charity. So I have a charity box, I make something and I put it in, and when it gets full I send it off. Um, you know, I take breaks from crocheting, but that box is always there to be filled whenever I'm back into it. Um, I do make um, cleaning cloths, like um, dish cloths for us. And I just recently made um, some, and I went with very thin cotton this time. So I'll put a few in Llama Vision. They're nothing fancy. They literally are just utilitarian and um, half double, half extended half double crochet. That's all they are. And I believe I did use a weight too. And the cotton is from Hobby. Um, it was like a package sale. Like I think it was like 18 of them for $14 or something at some point. Um, I bought a whole bunch because I also plan on using the same cotton in this size and thicker weights for, um, what are they called? The, uh, not washcloths. I mean, yes, the washcloths for the recent Starfish Foundation, which I have a bunch of those, and I think I forgot to bring them upstairs, so I'll have to have Mr. Pajamas run downstairs and get them really quick. Um, but I also want to make some uh, soap, once you stick soap inside, and there's a charity that collects those, and they put them in um, for disaster relief and uh, shelters and uh, food banks, I believe. So I was buying cotton for quite some time for that purpose. So I have quite a lot of cotton right now. And um, the organization that I am currently crafting for um, collects seven by nine squares. So I have a few of these. I just take scrap yarn and make up a whole bunch of these seven by nines. I have a cardboard that is seven by nine so I can always measure each one to make sure that I am sticking to the target. And that's what I was doing. I have more of these downstairs in the charity box. I probably have about um, maybe 60 or 70 of them right now. But this is what I do with scraps. And let's see what else. Then I came across from my charity box that I have to show you. Oh, and I will also um, put the charity information in there too. The one that accepts the seven by nine squares. It's, and they accept a lot of things and they help a lot of people. The organization itself is based in Texas, but they ship out all over the place and um, homeless vets, children, um, elderly, every, everyone, they help everybody. So there's the story of that place um, and why the seven by nine inch squares will, is on that website. So this is a chevron blanket. I'll see if I can hold it up. A chevron blanket that I made. Um, this pattern was from Hooked by Robin, and it's actually my very first chevron that I ever made. And I 
found out that I love to make chevron. It is so fun to make. This is a mandala cake, and I think the cake's name was Spirit, which is all the blue and gray. The yellow I added in, it's a yellow from uh, three weight. This, of course, is three weight. Um, it's from Hobby. There, um, we love this yarn or, or whatever it's called, their standard yarn in yellow because I thought that would really make it look nice. So I kept with adding it in after a certain color. And some of the, some of the lines are uneven, as in you might get one or two, you might get five. I kept all the yellow at five, but I kept the other ones a little bit more um, color controlled. So that's why some are three, four, two, because of the color controlling. But I did like that it wasn't all the same. But it's a very pretty blanket. Love the color. I think the color is beautiful. I'm really glad that I used that yellow. I think that made it stand out a little bit more. And when I make a three weight blanket, because these are pretty thin, they are pretty thin. When I make a three weight blanket for charity, um, I tend to make it quite large so that way it can be doubled and be warmer if that's necessary depending on where it is sent. Um, if I make a four weight then I usually make it a more standard size although I do try to make it a generous size for someone who is six feet tall like myself um, so that way it can uh, help a wider range of body types and sizes. Usually larger people have trouble finding something that fits them well. Smaller people can always appreciate having a little bit more to hug on. So I figure I try and make it for someone like my size. That way it kind of can cover a lot of ground that way. But I really love this pattern. And I really like Hooked by Robin. Um, I think she does such a great job teaching. Um, and has some really beautiful patterns. So let me ask Mr. Pajamas to go run and get the other thing real quick and, and then I'll show you what I'm working on for the Starfish. If you don't know about the Starfish Foundation, it is a foundation that bought some acreage and they are building a community for homeless, vet, for homeless veterans. The um, tiny houses, and then they're going to uh, teach and grow food and they have like a mess hall and community center and the extras that they come across for their food, they're going to then sell it like a farmer's market and then use that money to pay the electricity and things like that. So currently a lot of people are making um, washcloths for um, this foundation and there is still time to make some and send some. I will put the link to the foundation in the description box, but you can also ha seek out other information from the person who originally was contacted by Starfish Foundation because this person was doing Scrubby Sunday and that person is Heather from Strings and Threads. And if you need even more information, you can see my um, good friend Allie Artifacts. Um, Allie also has some information and she's also been taking part in Scrubby Sunday as well as others and she has a list of people who are also taking part. Um, I think Labor Day is the last day to give washcloths to send them so you might want to quickly get in on that. It's coming up and if this comes out past that time um, still please check out the foundation because they also accept gently used clothing, toiletries, and things like that. So that may continue to be accepted past the washcloth stage. Um, so while I, while I was making those, I also have a friend who I was going to make cloths for. So these are made for her in color specific for her kitchen. And it is a um, Suzette stitch. These have already been washed and then, of course, folded. Um, and this is just um, extended half double, and I did a border 
around it. Just, I made the border up as I went. I wasn't doing anything fancy. There's a few colors of these and this more cream color. And then of course this honey, honey color. And the yarn is extremely soft. Um, it is a four weight and it's a yarn that I hadn't used before, but I quickly fell in love with it. It is a, it's from Hershner's. Is it from Hershner's? It's either Hershner's or Mary Maxim, but I think it's Hershner's. And it's called Village Yarn and they come on a cone or skeins. And that one's not folded properly, so it got a little weird. Um, and it's so super soft. It reminds me of um, the sugar and cream, but nicer quality. Much nicer quality. It looks like it would be splitty. I really didn't have any problems with it. And it is so incredibly soft before and after washing. Really, really lovely. So while I was doing that, um, I started making ones for the Starfish Foundation. And I had some sugar and cream cotton. I had some um, cotton from Hobby. I had some of the more of cones of the um, Village yarn. So I just started making all sorts of stuff and some I put borders on and some I didn't so there's some and there I did most of these in just half double or extended half double some um, half double back loop only I believe here's another one and I started putting a little tab on them so they could be hung up I rather like this one a lot and some in this very vibrant green. And I will clear some out so that stack doesn't get too high. And I have this one, which turned out really nice. And a plain gray and white. More of that vibrant green. And, um, because I didn't want to overwhelm her by giving her way too many cloths, I actually just used all of the cones and just made a ton more. <laughs> it is more in the bag. This is all I can carry right now. So all of these, minus those first, I think it's nine, are all for starfish. So. I was waiting to make this video that way I could put them in a box and send them out. So speaking of charity things that are happening right now, one is Boggy Creek. Every year, I guess around the community, people make blankets. And this year there is someone who is collecting granny squares, but I will show you some squares that I have made and the ones that are currently being made. Now Leanne asks for five inch squares. So unfortunately I made these and they are slightly like five and a half inches. So I was like, hmm, maybe I will take these and sew these together and then I will use these colors that are in it and go around and make stripes of these colors in it and just make a blanket out of it. But the square itself is super pretty and it is a pattern by someone called Crochet Nuts, N-U-T-S, Crochet Nuts. And she not only has a uh, granny square for this, but she also has a rectangular square that you can continue making a blanket out of. So I will show you that as soon as I show you my next square. These yellow ones, because they're slightly larger, I'm going to sew these together and make them the center. But these I will send in and pardon my ends. I have not sewn them in. And as you can see, I love a long tail. So I always keep my tails very long. But I have a few here that uh, I still need to do an edge on these. So they will be just slightly larger. But that is what they look like. I think they're rather pretty. 
So um, I will make a few more of these and then I will be shipping those out. So I'll be the, done with those pretty soon. And I decided, I gotta put this somewhere. I decided to take that rectangular version of those and make a blanket. So I am currently working on this blanket. And, oh, I forgot to say, the, um, the yarn that I used for those is a combination of Karen Simply Soft or Loops and Threads. Loops and Threads has a very similar version to that. So it's actually both yarns in each of those. I believe the yellow was Loops and Threads, but the colored one in that square was um, Karen Simply Soft, or maybe it's opposite. And the gray in the other one is Karen Simply Soft, and the blue was Loops and Threads. This yarn and this one is all of the um, Lion Brand Bundle of Love. It's actually my first time using Lion Brand Bundle of Love. And obviously, you know, this is going to need blocked a little bit, but this is where it's at right now. And hopefully you can see that, which I think is very pretty. I absolutely love this pattern. Now, the reason why I decided these colors is because of this one color in here. And I'll stick it in Llama Vision so you can see it. This color right here is so right in between the color of pink and gray. So I thought I have to pair it with pinks and grays because it's just calling for that. It's actually called Quartz. And I think they named it very well. But I think it looks really pretty in a pink and gray blanket. And I'm not a pink person, but, you know, just because I'm not doesn't mean other people aren't. That's one of the beauties of crocheting for charity is that you can be really adventurous and make colors that are outside of your, your personal favorite colors. So it can actually be really fun to play around with. So I will also drop the link for this as well as the um, Granny Square from Crochet Nuts. And I will say I did find my the Lion Brand um, Bundle of Love. The other three colors aren't bad, but that white, oh man. Um, and I was pulling from the center out because I'm putting them, seeing them on end in the bag. And I'll try and show you really quick. See, I'm trying to stand them on end in the bag. Eh. So I can easily work from them. I just set that next to me and then put the blanket on my lap and, you know, continue on. But the white bundle of love, oh, I don't know who was after this one. But I went and pulled out and was pulling and working with it. And then a huge, I went to pull more and a huge yarn barf came out. And it wasn't attached to the rest of the skein. I mean, it was huge. And so I continued working with it because it was early on in the blanket. So I didn't need huge amounts because I'm cutting quite often. And I just couldn't believe it. And that wasn't the last one that I found. I found another one that was really small. It came out after that. It was it was just amazing. I mean, obviously someone stuffed the middle for white for weight, but that's just that wasn't right. So I I don't know. I mean the bundle of love, it's not bad. It's it's way better than my least favorite yarn in the world, which is the um Red Heart Super Saver. But so it's not Bad. I mean, the gray is a little bit, a little scratchier than say, like the pink is very nice, um, but it's not bad. And I'll keep using it. I have a whole ton of it. If you've ever seen this side of the room, maybe, maybe you can move the camera over and you can see this side of the room. Yeah, this is how much bundle of love I have. There's two more shelves going that direction and it's down and up. I have a lot of bundle of love to get through. So, yeah, I'm going to be using this for a while. <laughs> so, that is where we're at with that. I'm a little scared of 
what I'm going to find in the future, but what can you do? I mean, it is what it is. So now that's my other charity situation that I'm working on. I know many of you are, and that is fantastic. So I will put this away and get out the next things to look at. Now, as I have said earlier, is that I don't make things for myself. Recently, I decided that after 30 years of crocheting for charity, it was time for me to make some things for myself. So I will be making more things with myself in mind. And as soon as I started to make something for myself, I then proceeded to have dinner with a friend and offering to make things. Well, she actually, she did ask if I wanted to, um, or if I could remake a tablecloth for her that was in her family for a very long time. And it had, from all the years of holiday food, has stains on it, so she would like a replacement and to try to either remake it fully or keep it as close to, to that design as possible. So I am currently working on that. And of course I offered up to make a second one, even though I'm not going to make it like the first one. It's just going to be something that I thought the design would be really nice. I thought she would like the design. And it's going to be one that I kind of can go back and forth and make a little bit quicker, but it would be nice for her to have an alternative. And so the things that I did make for myself, I'll get around to showing you all of those things in a second, but the things I did make for myself, I made one thing before I agreed to um, take on the tablecloth thing. And that was my couch shawl. Finally, after all of these years, I decided I was going to make a virus shawl. And as I've mentioned, I am quite a large person, not just this way, but this way too. So I usually need quite a substantial shawl or a blanket. So I made a virus shawl and let's see if I can, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> as you can see, there's still this much left. And this is how I'd like, how large I like my shawls to be. If I'm going to make this style of a shawl. Um, that way I can really snuggle in it. So this, um, I will link where I got this particular virus shawl pattern. I thought the person did a fantastic job of teaching and showing the four row repeat. And... The yarn that I used was a hobby yarn. I believe it was their carnival, one of their carnival yarns. I think it might have been, I wanna say it was Paris, but I don't think it was. I don't, I don't think it was. Um, I'll write it down next to the link for the virus shawl. I'll write down what yarn this is that I used as well. I'll try to do that for all of them. Hopefully I'll, Hope I remember that. So this is my current couch shawl. It is, um, it is of course acrylic, which I don't normally wear acrylic because I get way too hot. But in a shawl, it's not bad because I can always remove the shawl. But sometimes you don't want to remove the shawl. You want to put it on and wear it, you know, as part of your outfit. So. But at the same time, it's also going to get a lot of abuse down at the couch because I'm going to put it on in the winter mornings. So I don't mind it being acrylic because it's so easy just to wash. So I will definitely make other acrylic ones for my couch shawl and maybe wool ones too. Maybe I'll have a stack of them to use. So that is one thing I made for myself. The other thing I made for myself um, when I was taking a break from the tablecloth was what you guys look at all the time. And this was the very first wool project that I made. This is a pattern by uh, Rich Textures Crochet. I believe it is called Orchid Shawl. And again, I will link it below. And um, I also bought the written pattern for this um, from her Etsy shop. And I bought quite a few patterns from Rich Textures Crochet. I really love a lot of her designs. Um, if I remember, I'll have, 
I'll have Mr. Pajamas put it in Llama Vision for a second, and then maybe he can do a, a, a thing. I don't really want to take it down right now. Um, but it is absolutely beautiful. And this is three hanks of hand-dyed wool yarn in a three weight, DK weight. And this is supposed to be twice as wide. The pattern calls for it being twice as wide. But at least now I know if I only can afford three hanks of it, this, I get a nice wide shawl out of it. And I know about when to stop so I can um, have enough to do the border on each end. So that's kind of how I go about buying hand dyed yarn. If I, if I want to make this or a similar situation, three hanks is what I need. And I love the look of this pattern. I want to have this in 20 colors. So I will re re be remaking this one a lot. Um, and if I remember, I will try to figure out what yarn this is. I think I remember, I'll have to double check and then I'll link what yarn it was next to the link for the pattern. Um, I might be small fish yarns from Etsy. It might be small fish yarns. I'll, I'll double check that information. So that is that. And I have a third thing that I um, made for myself, but it is still a whip because I haven't quite finished it. But it was something started for Bag O'Day's um, contest that she held. Well, I mean, not really a contest, but if you participated in her... Uh, make something then you have a chance to win a box of yarn that of course is over many many people um, contributed to that I also made an item for it and I wanted to make a shrug that that goes with the top that I made and the shrug is not finished quite yet uh, so technically it's a whip I've just gone away from it to work on boggy creek and starfish and things like that um, plus I have to watch what I'm doing because I promised to have at least one tablecloth done to my friend, um, by Thanksgiving. So I need to really get on that, but I will show you the thing that I made, the finished object and whip that is, um, with that. You guys might recognize this. I actually gave a bag, a kitty bag to Mama G and this is mine and it has all of my cure buttons on it. So, <laughs> okay, so this is my very noisy bag. This is my top that I made and it is all wrinkly and everything obviously. But that is the bottom, and this is the top. And I used a um, Hobby Sultan Dark in olive. It is a cotton cake, so this is all cotton. And I kind of made it like a um, peplum top, but it's a little bit longer in the bodice. So kind of is and kind of isn't. And the shrug that I'm currently working on is here and it is attached. So let me drag this out. This is the Sultan Dark in Olive. And I think I'm just making um, a cocoon style. I'm basically it's just a rectangle and then I will sew up a little bit on each side and that's it. It's just gonna be a, like a little cocoon style. Um, so right now I am almost finished with it. I have this far and I am nearly finished. I figured since that goes with the dark to the light, I would do it and probably do light to dark, but I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it dark to light. It's a cocoon. It can be flipped around either direction, but I think that's really pretty. So that should be a finished object when I can get back around to it. And hopefully I will get back around to it before I forget what I was doing, before I forget the stitch. 
that's the problem with me is that I, I'm a person who usually does one thing at a time and finishes it and then moves on because I forget what I'm doing. Um, recently I started having a travel project. Well, I wouldn't say maybe the last year or so, but I realized I have to keep it super simple. That's where a lot of the scarves in the, um, a lot of the scarves in my charity bin, because I just do half double or extended half double or extended half double BLO, um, just to keep it so super simple that I don't forget what it is that I was doing. So that way I can work on another project, um, like during the day or in the evenings after, after dinner and things like that. And it can be more complicated where I have to pay attention to like a four row repeat. So my travel project has to be something that is extremely simple. So me having this many whips going on at one time is really odd for me. And I don't necessarily do well with it. Um, I will have to go back and refresh my memory. This is my current travel whip. I take to like the chiropractor or doctor's appointments. And it just has, again, just another um, scarf that is um, half double. Yes, it's extended half double, back loop only. And this is what I take with me and I work on it. When I finish it, I throw it in the charity bin and... There you go. Okay, next is a circular blanket that I found from Hooked by Robin and I really liked it. It's called a Lotus Blanket and it is made with the Scapia's yarn. Um, so I made one too and it looks like this. I'll show you half of it like this. Super pretty and I'll throw it in there into Llama Vision so you can look at that and the colors. Now for people who have received a postcard, this is the blanket that is pictured in the postcard. I mean, if you haven't received it, still you have seen it somewhere, I'm sure. This is the blanket that looks like ocean waves in the postcard that um, Mr. Pajamas took. And this is a present for someone. I have two people I'm going to make this blanket for in two different colors. I'm just not sure which color to give to what person yet, so I'm gonna wait until I make both and then decide. But I think the person that I am making the um, tablecloth for, I think I'm gonna give this to them. And I'm going to make a different one for a friend that lives in a different country. So I really enjoyed making this. Um, she has a one through 10 for the beginning part and then a 10 through 20 and then you'll get the repeat and you can make it larger. This is completely one um, Scapia's cake. It is that half cotton, half acrylic. And um, you can also take the Whirl Etts. It's a, it's a Whirl. You can take the Whirl Etts and you can continue adding colors if you wanted to, or you can even get two Whirl Etts. But it is so pretty. Um, on Ravelry, you actually see a whole lot of people who made these not only from the Scapia's yarn, but also from other yarns. There's lots and lots of pictures. I, I think it's like five, 600 pictures. So if you actually wanna get a look at what it looks like in a yarn, especially the scapias, you can go there and have a look. And that way you can make a choice based on that as well. Beautiful project, very fun to make, not difficult. Um, I will link it below. And that brings us to the very last thing that I have to show you. I have referred to this in comments and as my never ending tablecloth. And I have also said I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't do this because I have to focus on finishing this. So it has been a little bit of a bane of my existence, but it is beautiful. And I am still excited to do it. It's just as, as anyone who knows, it's a, a very tedious thing to do. So it is, you need some stamina to get through it. 
and I will pull out the project itself, but I also made a little mini of what it should like finished, which is in this bag, which is what I keep all of these little, um, what I'm using is from Hobby, the lace weight. And I'll put it there. That is what I am using. I think it can see, yeah, you can see it. This is what I'm using. And uh, it is a size 10, in case you are wondering. It does not say on the site that it is a size 10. They only have one cotton lace weight thing in many, many colors, which is why it's called rainbow. Um, but it is a size 10, like if you get Aunt Lydia's and things like that. So what it will look like finished, and this is wrinkly, please excuse it. It is a, um, these larger circles are then put together and then there's smaller circles in between them. Now this is, I've received help from my bestie Sina who also writes patterns and she has helped me look at the pictures of this thing and figure out what to do. Unfortunately, the, um, the project itself has probably been below glass for some time and so it squashed a lot of the stitches and it's very hard to see what exactly was going on in most of it. So the only part that remains true is all the way up till these tilted clusters. That's the only part of this whole thing. Everything else is just, it kind of looks like this might be going on. Now this will also receive a 12 to 14 inch border around the entire uh, project. So this is only representation of the top part, not the border. That is something that I will have to figure out and make it work. That's kind of how this project is. So I have, what I do is I am, and I, and I have ends here. I kind of use these hair clips to keep it all together. And as you can see, I'm presently right here sewing these ends in because I already went through and did so over here. So you can actually tell where I'm at in this project, but I will take these clips out and open up a portion of it to show you. Um, I do not have the small circles done. These are only the large circles that are being attached at the moment. And I will give you an idea of the size. You know, I'll take out a couple more clips here. And open it up a little bit wider. You can kind of get an idea of where I'm at based on that. I think that's the back. Yeah, that's the back. That's the front. So that is where this project is at. And as you can see, we are at a length. I believe the length is going to be five by four. This section is five by four. And then there's going to be, like I said, a 12 to 14. It might even be a 16 inch border by the time I figure it out. Because this circle motif is also supposed to be in the border going around it as well. Along with some like netting and a lot of elements. So I will have to figure out how to marry those things together that it doesn't look like a Franken blanket. Which the previous blanket um, kind of looks like that in some areas. So I will have to try to figure out a better way to put it together and so it lays a little nicer. Um, we looked everywhere on the internet for a pattern because someone made it at some point. So there has to be some pattern somewhere. We looked at every vintage pattern site we could find. We looked through the entire databases on Ravelry. We looked everywhere. The only thing I found was one person who did a tutorial for the that sideways stitch. Everything else didn't find a single thing that looked anything like it. So I think that someone made this a long time ago, maybe back in the 60s or 70s, and they just did their own thing. I don't think they worked from a pattern, or if they did, it's 
been lost somewhere because there are lots of people who love collecting patterns from all the decades and they put them together for other people to use. So I've looked through a lot of those databases and along with my friend. So um, a lot of people that I've showed this to, they say I should make a tutorial on it since it is pretty much 90% what I'm coming up with and I might do that. I might try my hand at making a tutorial for this at some point. Um, so I'll have a think about it. I don't know how well tablecloths, you know, are wanted, but you know, it would be fun to maybe try it. So I'll, I'll definitely think about that. And so now this is the big video with all of my whips and foes. And hopefully, um, as I complete things, or start things, I can um, make smaller videos and keep you up to date with what I'm working on. And that's all I have. So tell me about um, what you think about this especially, because this is the most tedious thing, but about the other projects or what you're working on. Um, I would love to hear if you have made some of these yourself and I would even love to see pictures of it. So. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Bye, Yarny friends.